welcome to my office, come on in. Hey guys, we're actually filming up in Cleveland right now because I spend the summer up in Ohio and we're visiting friends and family and hanging out up at uh, our Ohio house and then I'm back down in Charleston for the school year with the kiddos. And uh, So Cameron, our videographer is up here, Q, one of our marketing, um, our marketing consultant is up here too. And we did a bunch of filming for Legacy Wealth Academy and making some little bit of content too. So we're at our headquarters, the Bratz Manor in Lakewood, Ohio right now. I was thinking about like some of my biggest takeaways from the first mastermind I ever attended, which was in February of 2015. And one of those was focusing on revenue generating activities. And so what I'd like to do is just go through a quick exercise that I used back in 2015 to completely transform what I spent my time on versus the things that I was just kind of filling a schedule up with, right? There's a difference between being active and being productive. You wanna focus on the productive activities. How do you figure out what those are though? Here's an exercise that I did. Come here, come on over to the whiteboard. All right. I created an Excel spreadsheet. So I just did this, I think at a third grade level, I keep things super simple and you're, you're gonna see exactly what I mean. But I just grabbed an Excel spreadsheet and I had the day of the week, you know, so it was like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And then I had the time, from the time I woke up, let's call it, you know, six o'clock in the morning, 6.15, 6.30, 6.45, 7 a.m., all the way down to the time I went to bed, let's call it 10 p.m. And in each one of these slots, I actually did it for, for seven days, not just the five work days, but I did it for all seven days of a week of a normal week, not a travel week, not an event week, nothing along those lines, of just what does a day-to-day -day look like and what do I actually spend my time on? And I went through and I cataloged what I did with my time every 15 minutes. So, hey, I uh, woke up, bathroom, right? Uh, breakfast. And that was two hours, another, or a half an hour, I'm sorry, breakfast. And then I uh, walked the dog and worked out, you know? And I, and I went through every 15 minutes, I had an alarm go off about, and I had to stop what I was doing and I wrote down what I did for the 15 minutes prior for the entire day, all the way down until the end of the day when I set my head back on a pillow. Then, and I catalog that for the entire week. Here's what this does. It gives you awareness, right? Where are you spending your time on a day-to-day -day basis? Like there were times where I was like, holy shit, I've been on social media for the past hour and a half in the middle of the day. Or I drove 30 minutes to some appointment to wait 15 minutes to meet, for, meet with someone that was a total tire kicker. And I met with them for 45 minutes because, you know, had to be cordial, right? And even though I knew early on that I didn't have to waste any extra time with them, then I had to drive 30 minutes back. And I was like, holy shit, what am I spending my time on? It was an hour, two and a half hours of my day on something that was completely worthless. So it creates awareness of where are you spending your time throughout the day. Then here's the key for doing, being, becoming more productive and being happier with what you did, with what you do. So I went through each one of these activities every single 15 minutes and everything got two icons next to it. And I'd either draw a dollar sign, meaning it made me money, or I'd draw a zero, meaning it did not make me any money. Is it a revenue generating activity or not? So that created clarity of what are the things that actually make me money on a day-to-day -day basis? All right, and what are the things that I'm just wasting my time on that don't make any money that I might be able to staff out? And then everything also got another icon. And it was the simplicity of a smiley face or a frowny face. Do I like doing it or do I not like doing it? And I, the, I think from a, from a quality of life standpoint, that's an important uh, piece of this puzzle, right? 
So I grabbed all the things, and there were some things that were zeros, but guess what? It was a smile, because I like walking my dog, even though it doesn't make me any money. You know, I like working out, even though it doesn't make me any money. You know, and you can, you can stretch it and be like, well, you know, you work out, you're more productive, you have more energy throughout the day, so it does make you money. That's not what I mean. I mean directly correlated to making money, right? Taking a check to the bank is actually one of those activities, right? And actually depositing money or sharing your wire instructions or, or making a phone call is a revenue generating activity for a prospect to raise private money or to uh, make an offer on a deal. Those are revenue generating activities, right? Actually billable hours in your day, that's a revenue generating activity, right? And then there's the things that might be revenue generating, but you don't like doing it, you know? Like uh, maybe it's going to the bank, you know, and depositing checks. I don't really like to go there, stand in line. I feel like my time could be spent somewhere else. So it might be a money generator, but it's kind of a frowny face for me personally. And what I did is I went through every single line item for seven days in a row of where I spent my time. Did it make money? Did it not make money? And do I like doing it or do I not like doing it? And I hung on to, initially at least, everything that made money and everything that was a smiley face. Everything that had a zero and a frowny face definitely was, was put onto a list. And a lot of the things with a, um, with a dollar sign and a frowny face got put onto like a secondary list. And what that list became was the job description for my first assistant. So now there's things that need to be done in your business, but not necessarily for done by you. And I remember thinking like, I didn't have anybody on my team. It was just me. I was a solopreneur. I'm trying to figure out, I don't even know how to hire somebody, right? I see these people with these big businesses with all these employees. How do they manage them? How do they train them? How do they, the employees know what to do, right? And I learned that process as I went along. So when I got back from that mastermind, I came back, I did this activity, I ran an ad for an executive assistant, I really just asked around, and somebody was referred to me, a guy named Marty. Marty and I sat down in the middle of February of 2015, and he came on board March 1st of 2015. This was a big deal, because in all of 2014, it's the first year I ever made six figures, and I made about $130,000. And when I went out to this mastermind, they told me I needed to do two things. I needed to do two things when I got home. First, it was actually before I got home, I needed to join the mastermind, which was $30,000 a year. And then I needed to hire somebody as an executive assistant and take the non-revenue generating activities off my plate. That all sounded good. The issue with it was I made 130 grand the year before and they just took $65,000 out of my pocket. You know, I'm like these guys, I'm never going to another event again because they just took half my money for the entire year. Here's the difference. You're not spending $35,000 on an assistant. You're spending $3,000 a month on an assistant. If you don't like how that's shaking out over the course of 60 days, you're not risking $36,000. You're risking $6,000. And I could afford to risk $6,000. That, that pivot in my mindset and just looking at it from a different perspective opened me up to understanding I can take this perceived risk at the time. So I hired Marty, he came on board, his job description became the zeros and the frowny face items, right? And I said, hey man, I, I, you can follow me around, listen to how I talk, watch how I interact, like you'll learn some of this stuff because I don't really know how to train you and just bring questions to me and we'll troubleshoot them together. But this is your roles and your responsibilities. And he went and took all those non-revenue generating activities off my plate. I, as the, as the business owner, could then focus on the revenue generating activities. You know what happened in the next 10 months from March 1st to December 31st? I thought my income was gonna drop because I saw being in a mastermind as an expense and I saw an employee as an expense. Both of those things are investments and you always get a return on your investment. In the next 10 months after joining that mastermind, the resources, the connections, the relationship capital that was built from that mastermind, and then having an assistant, I tripled 
my income from the previous year. I made $400,000 in a 10 month period based on doing those two things. And I correlate all of that income to doing those two things. So if you do not have a team, even if you do have a team, I, I'm actually guilty of this because I haven't done this activity in seven years. And I'm gonna redo it again as soon as I get back down to Charleston after the summer hits. And I'm gonna hire another assistant. Uh, Marty actually ended up becoming one of our asset managers. He's a rock star now. And, um, and I have so many good A players on my team. I haven't really had an assistant for a little while, but I need another one. And, um, uh, and I want somebody who could just kind of help me out with emails and some other things. And I don't really know what else. And so I'm gonna go through my day and I'm gonna do this exact same activity, even though I'm at a much different level than I was seven years ago. And that's gonna become the, become the roles and responsibilities for my next and new assistant. So if you have not done this, I'm telling you, it is a powerful, powerful exercise that you can go through. It's gonna give you so much awareness of what you're spending your time on, what you shouldn't be spending your time on, what you should be spending more of your time on, and really what you enjoy doing. Because if you are focused on the activities that you really like and you really enjoy, then guess what? You become better at those activities. And if you're really good at raising money and you get better and better at raising money, you like it more and then this compound effect sets in and you're able to achieve that much more when you're raising capital or when you're outsourcing deals or when you're building out your team if those are the activities that you really enjoy doing and you have a better lifestyle and better quality of life and you're just happier and you're making more money. So go do this activity, tell me what your biggest takeaway was, I'd love to see it in the comments and if this is helpful, please share it with somebody else, please like, um, uh, the video, please comment on the video and please subscribe to our channel. I'm always trying to give you guys hacks. I'm doing this because I truly want to help you become a better business owner, a better entrepreneur. So just do me a favor back. I don't need anything other than please like subscribe and comment on the video. So until next time, appreciate you guys. Be your best.